and that guy over there. And then I think that's that. It's so quiet today. Michelle, are you gonna drive? Mm hmm. <laughs> She's gonna drive. Michelle? Are we on the air? Yeah, I guess so. We are? Yeah. We should probably tweet about that. Hi, everybody. Where's Hi. our theme song? Oh, that's true. I wanna see if this works. We gotta play our theme song. Did I mess this up? Do, do, do. <laughs> boop, oh, that was a different boop, project, boop. wasn't it? I was gonna play this song. There we are, we are. On the air. So it's like the sun song. It's time for a little help. Ooh. <laughs> With Tommy and Ben. The show where we help ourselves to an hour or so of streaming about stuff we're interested in. <laughs> the Chill Tuesday where we talk about music production. It is pretty Sort true. of. Oh. There we go. Hey, look, there are people here. Hi, people. Hey, everybody. What's up? Welcome to a little help. Oh, yeah. So, I need to find more video game related songs. You do. Let's do. find some Animal Crossing remixes. Oh, I feel like that'll play I have, well. I have, a, I have a killer. Don't even. I hope we. I hope our stream isn't muted by by playing it. I actually have Michelle. a deep, dark favorite. Um, it's by Benjamin Briggs. Uh, KK Ryder. Oh. He is a really, really, real or KK Cruisin. Can I just play that? It has edits. I will buy this song if he's got it. Hey, thanks Twitter for mentioning me. Yeah. Hey chat, thanks for chatting me. Who's here? Seems like a reasonable number of folks. Doo -doo. Got a couple folks. That's a dogen. Got a couple folks. Got a dogen. Got a. Let me see who's in here. How I nobody else here? I don't know. Yeah, that is weird. Two cards here. Yeah. Our well, like I see people, then. I see people watching, but I can't see who's in our chat, which might be a weird Twitch bug. You know, Twitch bugging, always bugging. Let me see. Yeah, it only shows Hi. Dogen. Well, maybe somebody's watching. The two cards saying hi, yet not showing on the chat list. Weird. This is a mystery. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Hi, everybody. Hi. Whether you're here or not. I have a new technique today. Uh, Remember when I asked you to raise your hand earlier? Uh, we can do transitions ourselves. How? How did we do that? Did you set this? up a connect? No. It's uh, No, nah, connect is not useful. It's a major... Hey chat, I'm here for you. Thanks for hanging out with us and playing um, Minecraft. Oh, this, this is weekend. cool. Cool, right? How? What'd you do? I'll tell you later. <laughs> well, so we have this system called Hotspots on the TriCaster, mm -hmm. and you can set up regions of the screen mm. to take different actions. Mm. So you can, if you're if you're on point, you can you can like wave good like we can set up one to like, like you know, wave goodbye. I like that. And say hello. I like that. That's pretty neat, right? And every snack time will confuse the hotspot. Well, we have to person. disable it. Like, it's different for each session, but... Ah, I like it, though. You can Blah. even, like, kind of half do Blah. it. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> what list? What list? Oh, there's a... There's a chat... What's it called? Like, the list of people in the chat isn't showing for me? Right. And now I see everybody. Well, I see good good people. Anyway, it's all good. It's all good. So, friends. So. What are we doing today in Ableton? That's a great question. I don't know what people want to do. I want to pull down more songs. Well, you have a gig um, this weekend. So the idea was prepping a set. True. Right? We're getting some loops together. But you know something? I don't use Ableton for performing live. 
Well, we could we could step away from Ableton tool? and talk about this new tool. Oh man, okay. It's gonna be kind of hard for me, but we'll work it out. So, um, I use this tool called MLR. Uh, MLRV. An MLRV is a sample slice sequencer type of tool. I use it with my grid thing. If you've seen this show before, you might have seen this mono before. Um, I can use it to hide. And oh, that's convenient. Oh, it's the close up, the close up thing. Oh, this is this is <laughs> the future. We're we're living in the future. I don't know why this thing is lighting up so much. Oh, it's because it's attached to Ableton. That's pretty cool. I forgot about that. I forgot that I had Ableton related skills, but I wanted to pull loops out of live projects. Okay. Um maybe that or maybe just take the whole thing. Just this is too relaxed. Like it's kind of a dance kind of show, you know, it's a Comic Con type of thing. Mm hmm So as neat as this is it's just a little bit like I don't think it would survive at like one thirty, you know? Not my thing. So anyway, in order to do this type of show, um, I use a different tool with this controller. This controller has many features. I want to disconnect this one. And I guess I'll just kind of replug it in and use this other tool, this thing, MLRV 2.5. Amazing. So MLRV has a bunch of banks, right? Let me just kind of make sure our audio is set up. And then um, what you do is you take maybe like, here I have my, but oh, you can't see my finder window, great. Here I have my kind of, my notes, my set kind of notes. And you might have heard a few of these loops on this show, but you put it in, it'll play at kind of an adjusted speed and we can do mixing between four different audio channels. Um, so each track has different play modes, like Ableton, where we have loop, one shot, and we have slice. Slice is pretty neat. Because if I press that button down, I'll be able to get just a little bit of that song. Um, it's easier to adjust by octaves, but The thing about this, the sequence aspect of it is um, there are four pattern banks on the top right here. And so if I hit this button, it'll activate that number four, and it's waiting for me to record a pattern of a certain length, right? So I can do like... And so I can play back a sample with this type of, um, you know, I guess reordering? You know. I don't know. There's a viewer list, man. I'm just gonna just gonna pretend I don't know about it. Anyway, so I'm putting together a bunch of tracks. Like this is original, but I'm also taking remixes and cutting them up and doing live remixing. It's kind of like my it's kind of my shtick, you know. So let's zoom out, I guess. Wow, amazing technology. <laughs> I need to get my chat on. A lot of that is, so this, all of these samples like are cut up in divisions of like this thing has 16 buttons across, right? And so you want to subdivide the samples that you take by two. Hey, it's Discord, procedurally generating buttons. That's useful. People have sent me messages. Can someone tell me who this person is? What? Cool. I don't know. I got a pre-alpha raffle from Rog Lamlington. I I think that's cool. Oh, I get to play. Uh, right. It took me a minute. Sorry. I get to play a uh, game my friends are working on. Uh, Epic Tavern. I just got it. God, I want a Ralpha for their alpha <laughs> for testing, which is like a weird exchange to work for free. 
but also I was looking forward to the game. I believe in those guys. I want them to win the game. So anyway, I have a series of loops. Like uh, I, I'm not going to. We had like a, an issue last week where we got muted for ten minutes because I was playing copyrighted material. Oh, so I don't know if I want to cool. do that again. When did that happen? Um, <laughs> during Power Block. I was like playing some of the tracks. If you were here last week, I was playing some of the tracks for uh, for this set, kind of like you know oh. this stuff together. Like I think it might have been the High Roll track that I really really like. Oh. Um. But I did get permission from Robo Rob to use his track, and I think you'll really like it. So anyway, what I like to do is I take up a bunch of, I take a, a single song, and I'll pre-cut it into loops that fit, right? Mm -hmm. Let me just move this over to none so it doesn't get too distracting. Input one, input two, input whatever. And so um, you can set all of these parameters up with a MIDI controller. Um, if you want to switch between these different tracks, each track has a stop. This is a free program, and it actually works with a bunch of different controllers. You don't need a, a, a mono actually to use this tool. Um, there's also a I'm trying to remember where the button is. There's a Remire Tempo Slave. That's not useful for me right now. But I don't know. Anyway, um, where is the can change the row count to match like the uh like the launch pad that you have. There's also a launch pad mode. Um if I can find it. <laughs> anyway, there are a bunch of buttons changing colors and you know, very bright stuff. Device? Here we go. So I have launch pad, different sizes of we have livery controllers, APC controllers. Um so you know I should I should I should show you how to hook this up. You'd probably get way into it. Um Anybody out there who has a grid controller of whatever sort, this will just kind of work. Um, hello, Garion. Welcome. Hope you had a good weekend. I feel like it's been a long weekend. I feel like we've been gone forever. Um, but I feel, but I feel good. So, for example, I'll take this track. And you can kind of stretch time really well. So, it has kind of a record quality to it. But one thing that I kind of wanted to get ahead of is making sure that this ratio here, the speed, if you can see that number, um, you zoom in, maybe one of these things. Um, <laughs> oh, God. There could be a guy back there messing with me for all I know. So, you can see up here, there's this ratio speed, steps, all of this kind of stuff. And I need to actually drop it down octaves at a time in order to get, boom, in the neighborhood of the actual speed of the track. And you can kind of play it like a record. But you set up, you know, skipping points, right? Yeah. <laughs> so then the next thing we're going to want to do... We have, like, jumping points, right? DJ Roborob! I love nice. this guy. Oh, he's, he's really good. This is Garnet, back together. And I'm never going down. Done a good the job. Hands of the likes of you because I'm so much better. The two of us, the heads of you, hate that, but we both. The two of us ain't gonna follow your rules. And so, you can see there's like a correlation, maybe. Jumping around. Um, the grid up here. Go ahead. But a bunch of just floating around. And that's hmm. the game. Cool. So finding a bunch of different songs and remixing them across that way, there are some effects that we can play with mm -hmm. as well. Um, this program has a delay and reverb send and a couple of other like mastering I think I'm going to use um, that have this a loose like set of uh, EQ compressor and I guess an exciter. 
which is called Inflate, um, which is also kind of a compressor, isn't it? But yeah, that is the tool of the day. Um, I just like it. Uh, the, the one of the guys that really inspires me with this tool with this controller has been using it. It's been kind of a staple for the Monom community for a long time, and I highly recommend it. Who's Tangy plays? Hey, are you guys watching Chili Dog Fest? Because I'm a big fan. I want to find the Ben Briggs. Have you heard this track? The uh, his his KK Groover track. No, I haven't. Dude, hopefully I can buy it because I really it's it's like kind of what set me off on this like super nerdcore life. I feel like you probably deleted it. <laughs> it's like kind of old, but uh, Ben Briggs. It kind of has like I feel like a lot of guys have like a oh here we go KK cruising. Um, yeah. Well, let me just go to the page and play it for you. Bloop. So this guy, BenBriggsMusic.com. I can download it now, probably on iTunes. Game Chop. Oh okay, so it's like a man camp site. Hmm. Sweet. Download cool. it on louder. I definitely will. I don't know. Should I do that before I <laughs> play the song? Guys, this is so good. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That sounds really fun. I, I mean, I I met so the guys who had Melinda last. The guys yeah. Who were at that show, nice. Decided. That's really cool. Get it together. Thank you. Tired. Don't know. Pleasant too. I don't know. I feel like all my. Thank 
I probably muted my microphone. For the good of the colony. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. Proc amp makes us look like we have seen the sun before. That's good. Ba -bum -bum -bum. Do -do -do. Let's see. Do what spits Andela? Oh, so actually, here's a pretty good example of a track that I had made that I need to fix. <sighs> Save changes? Not right now. We're going to we're going to go into the new area zone, and I can't see this, so you probably can't see this. We're gonna up the look and feel again, and get there together. If I can remember. Where the look feel tab is. There we go. Boink. More. I need bigger letters. Nice. Alright, so. I made this trap uh, for the uh, Nerdcore instrumental album. I don't know. It was like my. I wanted to connect with a bunch of nerds, so I made a bunch of nerdy music. <laughs> And is pretty much playing over Andela Fella or Andela Town. Hmm. I wonder. So sad. Do I just not make dance music? Is that a thing I don't do? <laughs> <laughs> I just can't can't do it. Oh hi, Robert Alter when England Zilla has returned. I've made up it's, I do that so that nobody can find you on social media. <laughs> I don't know. I th that is like one of the few comic book songs that I do have that's like kind of relevant. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can cut up. I can cut up Jake. <laughs> that's fun. Let's do it. I have a beat. I think that'll go with this as well. Um. So I guess the first thing to do is warp it, and then we can kind of run from there. Let me just. A little bit of space. For oh, look, we're half transparent. Oh, we we'll fix it. <laughs> we're big. We're less big. We're big again. Now we're less big. <laughs> now we're big again. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move this up. You can see, fortunately, this is mono and chip music, so you can actually see the, um, the beats really well. <laughs> so this is the downbeat, a show that we haven't done in a while. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna start with that. You can also right click and set to one, and that'll move your entire meter over, so that when I want to see where the next bar is, boom, 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 over here, by dragging and scaling up, it actually is pretty close. Eighty-five. I think the song's about ninety-four. But who cares? Because we're gonna stretch by selecting this waypoint this wave marker and pulling this down I wonder if that's pretty close I don't know have we done this before nope we haven't Boom. where is it where is that downbeat this is the story of my life Pretty close. Yeah. 
maybe like some specialization on that mono track. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Let's make it a little wider. I showed you guys this effect track yesterday. I can rebuild it. Actually, it's something I've been meaning to talk about for ages. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> maybe that's the thing to do. End of the show. End of the. That's it. Anyway, we have no time left. All right, here we go. So <laughs> no, we got time. There's, <laughs> there's, there's a, this is a, a, a an instrument rack. Let me just rebuild it. Let's make a better one. We can rebuild it. Uh, what is this? Yeah. So we'll take an empty audio effect rack. Bum bum. And we will put inside of it this thing right here. Uh, another audio effect called multiband dynamics. Multiband dynamics is pretty much a three channel compressor. And what I like to do is duplicate the crap out of it, make three of them. I'm going to rename this layer into the high section. You can do like any number, I mean three really is the way to go. High, mid, and low. Oh, I'm too. Excuse me, my head's in the way. Um, I'm a big fan of this hotspot thing, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, so high, middle, low, you know, right click, you can change the color. Um, I don't know. They're all pretty good colors. Uh, <laughs> it's this grayish, bluish, lavenderish combination we'll have to do for now. And if I play through it now, you can see it clips because it's splitting the signal into each of these chains um, and that's no fun for anybody so the first thing to do is mess with this high it's pretty dry it does have a bit of it like I said all of these channels are compressor or compression so attack release um, this is the basically threshold or timing threshold and I guess below above right it's a transient below and above, and it's about taming oh, the intensity of each attack. So these little buttons right here are actually, if you look at our little helper guy, these act, these enable um, gain activation stage. You can also disable um, the actual band, but the best thing to do is to solo a band, right? So I can solo the low band. Uh, if I have it activated, I can deactivate the high band. And I can solo this chain. Um, and you may not be able to hear it because of uh, muted. It. But now we have this like low shelf. We have this filter here that kind of, but oh, it's not even the right thing. So we can kind of comb into the area of this low frequency that we want, right? Dude, dude. I hope, I was so good. I'm sorry about my mic, dude. I have to double check it. Nobody's, nobody's backing up. Listen to this low filter thing real quick as I mysteriously make the thing go away. What a neat transition. on the tuning of the song. Like, that's definitely not something I want to emphasize, right? Okay. And then the middle section, we'll do the same thing. We'll activate this one, but we will solo the mids. Right? It's so loud. Sorry, guys. And also, this is after our gain stage, so it's going to be confusing. See, it's still kind of pushing, but you can use this 
to also split the sound out. So now that I have kind of a range in between, and I can even scoop that or carve that even more with an EQ, right? I can grab EQ8, and I know that I have an area above 180 or 130 um, that I can just kind of cut out. And I would say I'll probably go down to 2K and do the same thing. But also cut out the other side. I'm sorry, you guys can't see that. My my mistake. We'll cut out the other side. And use this utility now to start to widen the track. And widening is basically adding like a little bit of a pan delay to either side. So now I have everything except for this high frequency content coming through. And before I switch over to that, I might as well just get ahead of it. And make that crossover frequency the same as my other filter. And enable it. So now the whole song is here, yet again. And ideally, you wouldn't hear much of a difference, well, between the two utility tracks, um, between the two tracks, because I'm going to take that and make it just a bit more wide. And so the, high no the higher sounds balance out better when they're further, like, I guess, out there in the stereo field. It's not really, like, left or right as much as it is, like, out. <laughs> like, I really can't describe the effect of that <laughs> spatialization. Um, and the other thing, obviously, the ground did is you pull the bass in over here. So I like to sit around 25 or 30 percent of the width, basically bringing whether a track is more mono or more stereo, whether that um, that range of signal, anything in the 140 range, 140 hertz range or lower is sitting closer to mono or is spread more far out to like completely panned um, sound like whether it, there's bleed across both channels I hope well thank you so much and yes dude my laptop is coming in hot hopefully I fix that alright also what is that Show me that spectrum. Ding, 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 Show me where you're hurting. It is the bass. It is. Alright. Cool. Now, I feel pretty good about turning that mono track to something panable. I mean, I guess I would have done that anyway. Is this just a weird, pointless step that I take in the process of making stuff? Ah, there we go. Cool. There we go. Still sounds muddy to me. Is it better? Good. Tangy, let me know what you watch on YouTube. Because YouTube is alright with me. Alright. I feel like this is still going to be hugely loud. I had to turn down this master. 
but I also have a bunch of other crap that's boosting it. And I usually tune this for everything out, but, but what I can probably do is to save all of that stuff. Um, maybe. Get, get out of my face. Program. And really the key element, or the takeaway, or the point, the point was to zoom in, I wanted to just grab a certain number of meshors and kind of mix that back into that other set, right? Let's see. Is this also boosted? Like, no, that's just what it sounds like, dude. Complex Pro. Or, do this. <coughs> My favorite transient trick of all time. This is probably my favorite song from this game. I don't know. I, especially, there's like that live one that he did with, is it Jeff Ball? Like, <laughs> playing piano? Or, playing violin and some? Prob? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? I do know Jeff Ball playing violin and viola. Yeah. That's like, there's like a waltz pack that he, that he plays. It's... Like, out of the context of the game, it's incredibly, incredibly deep stuff. I don't have anything on this track. That's, that, that'd be boosting it. Sweet. Anyway. Anyway, now that we've done the, <laughs> the other part, let's just say that I have this section of four. Let's see, how long is this? Eight to sixteen. I already have a loop region that's that long. Set this to eight bars. Check your loop. Neat. I guess an example. That's kind of it. Um, I believe, I think I'd have to consolidate it to bake the timing down. Otherwise, I will be editing the sample at its original speed. And that's less fun. So that's cooking. Buy all the Ben Briggs stuff. There are a bunch of artists that I'm definitely boring from and looking into. There's, uh, I think, what's it, is it Justin Landino? <laughs> Jeff? Uh, Josh? I don't remember. <laughs> it's terrible. But he makes such a good Zelda remix. I think I played it last week. Uh, if you were watching also Robot Bob, let's uh, get some knobs. Let's look at the web. We should all tune in to the uh, IP in the real world. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> the New Tech live stream. I'm just sorry. I've been a, I got up too early today. I'm disoriented. It's alright. Do do do. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the good news, NES dude. I'm glad it's I'm glad it's better. I probably have commented on that more than once already. It gets better. Anyway, I think that is pressed down now. It's still way loud. That uh, just might be the television I'm sitting at. You know. With its with its mighty speakers, which I, I'm just not ready for. So, I guess live. Give me what you got. Is that coming close to one? You can use there's this, this meter they've added into the software right right over here. Um, up there, and it shows you the. If you click it, it'll reset. It shows the dynamic range, like the highest volume that it is experienced since it started playing the track. So you can actually produce a pretty reasonable mix. You press delete, you can 
or backspace you can remove that automation. You can see here that that, you know, dynamic range there's about negative six. Pretty good. So, as long as that's not in the positive range, like negative one to negative three is pretty reasonable. If you can have a dynamic range of about 12 to 14, then you have relatively high quality audio. But I also turned off all of my grip. And this thing, which is probably the problem. of the remaster of the remix. Just a little bit of treatment. Just a little bit of heart that I think will help it get into I feel like that's doing nothing. Let's render it. Uh, so yeah, rendering out by section. So slow. Cool. Good job. Ableton has a loop rendering function. If I press Command Shift R, I can get our render or export window. I can say render is a loop. That's great. I've already done a lot to get the track pretty close to where I want levels wise, so I'm not going to normalize. Dithering. Actually, a rectangular dithering would be a good suggestion for a track that has a lot of saw and square waves in it that are pretty clear to read. It just changes the characteristic of the interpolation between samples. Um, there's also a better way to do that. But you also don't need it for a lot of cases. I don't know. We can talk about that later. We've rebuilt the spatializer rack. It kind of works. I'm kind of happy with it. I don't know if you guys can hear the difference. Alex EDM is back. Hey, do you guys have any tracks for us to listen to? I know Alex EDM wasn't here last time. He's more of a Rockstar Academy dude. Able to play some samples using my computer keyboard. Um. Do I need a MIDI keyboard to play all of the slices of a sample in Ableton? I don't think you need a MIDI keyboard for that, necessarily. Um, it depends on how you slice it. We can actually do that right now. Let me render this loop very quickly. And I will... Uh, what is the name of this track? I don't know. I don't know. I just did Armory track. I'm putting everything into the snippets folder. Just just do it. So it prepares, it renders in case there is an effect at the end of the loop that would appear in the beginning of the loop, like an echo or a delay. That's why it has to render. That's what render as a loop basically does. And then, there you go. So, Alex EDM. There are too many slices on my keyboard. I think I just need a MIDI keyboard in order to play them all. I suppose a MIDI keyboard is the way to go. I mean, what kind of sample are you trying to play with? Um, like, I would definitely see if I have... What is this? Okay. I should have some kind of weird vocal sample. We have been educated. Ooh. To use our minds in a certain way. I believe this. A way that ignores or screens out the fact that every one of us is an aperture through which the whole cosmos looks out. Oh, you don't say. You see, just it's as if you had a. He's just going to keep talking. Hi there, this is my message to millennials about how to change the world. Sure. Whoa. 
Yeah, I got a lot of interesting stuff. Um, this is Jordan Peterson talking about how to change the world properly. And so I think what you're talking Hi about... There. This is my message to millennials. <laughs> about what you're talking about, Adam, is uh, when you're slicing to a new MIDI track, right? And I think last week we went through, um, if you were watching um, vocal slices in a minute, where, I mean, you would probably pick the... You'd probably pick the samples that you want instead of having the whole thing to play across. Um, that's right. I'm generally chat. I'm watching you chat. I'm paying attention to you, Alex. So, um, if you use a larger, like, division of the actual sound, then it'll come up with less samples. I know it may not fit. Um, for example, if I choose transients, I will get thousands of samples back. 9,049 samples. And that is too many samples. So I'll probably have to pick something a little bit more conservative. Even so, this is a huge, huge, huge file to start with. Um, and so maybe we'll pick, like, what's he talking about over here? I just wasn't quick enough. What? Oh, I think you like... These are very complex ideas. I think he's, I think he uses, like, a clip of Harry Potter or something like this. So I'm going to separate this from the rest of the track. Um, split. Boom. And you could disable the other stuff. I'm really just going to drag it to a new zone. Because like, all this is doing is it's saying, oh, start playing here and then playing there. But if I press consolidate, it'll make a copy of just this region. And it's probably still too long. What is this? 25 minutes? Oh no, that's only like three minutes. Um, how come I am not using simpler? I absolutely should use simpler. I just, you know, I, I know what you're talking about with the the new simpler slicer thing. And so let's try it out. I actually haven't used it. I have like a weird other method. They have a what's it called? Have you seen this? The new simpler thing. Hey, look, let's delete time. Alright, so what he's talking about, which I assume is a he, I don't know, is in simpler, I usually use, I don't know, whatever the easiest thing to get to is. This is not it. It's an instrument where you can drag audio samples and it'll either play at different rates. Um, check out on Clad Sign. Guys, my hero. These are very these are very these are And that's definitely one way to get through. This is the new kind of hotness people are way into. We can choose different types of slicing and it's basically the same thing as right clicking on that sample and re slicing it. If I slice by region slice by region then I can choose which areas I want. I don't remember where the beginning of the region is. Um, let's see. These are these are very com then, then act, these are so, very complex ideas, and you can read about them in my book, Maps of Meaning, if you let's want. Let's also it's make this a uh, gate. These are so gate will these allow me to let go. Click slice. Um, what this allows you to do is choose different regions with your keyboard, and it'll adjust chromatically. So right now I'm actually playing. I'm not playing with my box here. If I Hopefully I can bring my laptop up without destroying everything. But um, over here, you'll see my keyboard. I'm just going to play with that middle row. But you notice that, like the computer keyboard, right? Then is going to skip because then, they're not. Then, 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 then they're not actually. You know, it's going to slice chromatically. Then run it math. So A W S E D, right? That first few. Then I have There are a bunch of interesting little warp zones over here, so let's mess with that. Can I clear all of these? Can I just manually slice it? You bet. You betcha. So let's see. So this is kind of how um, people used to make. Um, they're still these. This is how people. This is kind of like the what's known as like the MPC workflow. Um, so you can actually add more regions. By just double clicking. 
Like, ooh, yeah, that twelve is nice. Just. What else I got? You were brilliant, folks. You were brilliant. I just wasn't quick enough. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> just wasn't, just wasn't quick. Just, 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 just. Just. Anyway, you can use that to make a some kind of thing. I don't know. Once you have your slices determined, I think the keyword is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, I actually do not use Melodyne to get a proper melody. We're going to talk about Melodyne soon, though. Yeah, we can do that. Do you want to do that? Transition to that as soon as we're done with this topic. So anyway, I'm going to slice enough for my keyboard. I really want to change the fade in amount. For each slice, and perhaps give it time to release. So maybe instead of trigger, I will switch it over, or maybe I'll switch it over. Don't worry, Jenny. 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 Don't. Some weird. Just. Some Harry Potter beat today. <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> it's not weird at all. Of course. Phoenix tears have healing powers. So when you enable Alex of course Udium, they do. I'm on top of you. Uh, I got you, man. So when you're playing the keyboard, I'm right here in the top right of Ableton. Oh, you might not be able to see. Crap, I can't even wave my way into success here. So the um, it's it's the home row, right? It's A D S F G. That whole middle of like caps lock to enter, um, or all the white keys. <laughs> And um, we're going to. It's kind of laid out like a like a you know Western keyboard. So A W S E G F G Y H U J I K L are pretty much an octave. Um, I think C to C, A to L, and that only works with your software keyboard enabled. And you can adjust like if you press uh. If you press Z and X, you can see down here that it changes the range of my computer keyboard. So you can actually, um, like if you look at this, you can see I'm going from octave C1 to D2, C2 to D3. And I can also change velocity. So I'm pressing Z and X to adjust octaves. C1 is the first sample. And then I can change velocity as well by pressing the next two keys over. So C and V will allow me to go from 1 to 120 something in velocity. Um, in this case, the sampler is not going to be velocity sensitive. We can adjust that. Um, but let's... Don't worry. Let's do that. Let's get an LFO in here that does stuff. But it doesn't seem to have, be tied to anything. In simpler, you can go to the controls and we can actually change the destination of the LFO. Like volume. All right, that's pretty cool. And let's make a beat out of Harry Potter. Whatever, I'm here. I'm here for you guys. Uh, I just need a drum kit real quick. Do I have one lying around? Tommy, you have a drum kit? Drum kit? I I don't <laughs> know. Uh, let's see. I always just do loops. <laughs> Well, in Ableton, I do loops. Hey, me too. They're fun. They're easy to... Or I do clips, drum clips. Layer them and make your own beat. Bye. I have a lot of beats. <laughs> nice. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Hey, Jenny. It's going to be okay. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. I love it. All right, and I think this is eight bars. Alright, uh, let's see. Is it M? Ah, oh, my keyboard. Really? That's cute. It's the loop region! So I still have that selected.
Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, I was gonna make a Crash Bandicoot loop, NES dude. This actually loops really well. That's a top secret Crash Bandicoot loop. <laughs> uh, I might actually use that for my set this weekend. That's not a bad idea. I didn't think to look in my loops folder for loops. I have a problem, guys. I've been kind of recovering from not sleep. Anyway, I know the duration of this one is 8 bars, so I'm going to cheat. I'm going to pick the last point over here and scooch it over. If I press Alt, I can get just that long. I can say loop. I can say your length is 8. I can hit enter, and I can also make loop, make good, make play. <laughs> Good thing I have beats on around. Alright, so anyway. Hilarious. Alright, let's get my loop region together. Turn this down a bit. I wish I can adjust kind of slice by slice. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't use the slicer. If I need to tune a sample... Instead, I'm gonna have to tune the other way. Not sold. Where's my metronome? Just let me have it, metronome. I'm sorry. Sorry I ever left you. Give me that quantized recording. Just make make my life easy. Where's that button? Options. Record quantization. That's right. Cool. And then we're good to go, right? Jenny. take my Harry Potter beat that seriously but it's hilarious it sounds pretty good I need a little bit less I think a little inspiration everywhere you turn <laughs> all right I'm serious though I do need the preset or some kind of I have I have packs or I have a user library somewhere sitting around here of an actual drum kit that I've put together Drums. Sounds. I need just a drum, just a regular old drum, drum kit, man. Disco. Give me something good, Ableton. Where's 
just like the... Where are the breakbeat selections in this? What about breakbeat selection? I don't want to loop though. You're killing me. I don't literally... Who's texting me? Does anyone want to answer my text messages? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to press X and Z to go through the um, to go through your here your samples. Live hi hats, vintage breaks. That's what I was looking for. This is a weird pack because they remade a bunch of classic drum breaks. Whoa! It's very weird. I have this one actually. It's pretty interesting. Let's use that. So now I'm gonna compare that to slice to new MIDI track. Slicing has its benefits. I'm gonna slice by half note or something. Sixteen slices is pretty good. I'll take it. Okay. And now. I think I still have quantized input in. I think we're good to go. It's kind of like, I think we've done an example. I don't know. I feel like I'm always giving examples. Oh yeah. I like it. I like it. Sold. Anyway, we should get a count in so that we are cool. Is that this thing? Oh, this is quantization. I want the other thing. Do, do. Don't worry, Jenny. Jenny. That's the technique. And that's how you get the gig. Watch. Potter week for me too. <laughs> yeah, that's for rough. some reason. It, you know, you never know when Harry Potter. Just feel like it. Just feel like. It. But it's like not the good part, right? It's like the the wizard part. It's not the good part. It's the wizard part. <laughs> the not wizard part. The not wizard part. I don't know how to. No, I, I sort of know. What I mean. Yeah, we've just been watching the parts of Harry Potter that don't involve wizards. Uh. <laughs> just the scenes with the Dursleys. It's our, it's our jam. I want some saturation. I want some reverb. I want some body on this thing. Have you seen this wave shaper thing? It's like, what? So, the I saturator haven't. in live can turn like anything into cheese. It's pretty disturbing. 
bird. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can feel it. Group it, bust it, compress it, call it a day. I don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe I'll use it. Do, do. It becomes a weird file. I need a file name. I don't know. Dude, dude. This is missing something. Yeah. Dude, dude. Pad, y'all are killing me. Computer's so warm today. I don't like this. That. Just keep playing it. Keep playing your machine. Uh, maybe close enough. Sorry guys, I don't want to get too lost in patching. What I really want is just like a sine wave base. I wanted to get that character of that stupid filter. Character of the mumbling filter. Instruments. You can just find a sine wave and put it in simpler and then you have... <laughs> there you have that synthesizer, basically. I can't really hear it. Kirian, welcome back. I made a Harry Potter route for you. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I promised myself that I would make a group and really I just need to give it to Tommy. Word. Do you have Melodyne? I don't have Melodyne. I have Melodyne. Cool. Let's check it out. Let's compress this. And get the heck out of my life. Sure. Don't 
worry, Jenny. Jenny? Brilliant. Oh, man. Let's delete those files. That is it. Um, the break is chopped. Um, I would definitely... The difference, so we're kind of going through... Today we're kind of going through... Or I was going through briefly kind of the difference between using slicer... Or using the slicer mode of simpler versus using slices. And you can actually go back and forth. So when you're done slicing, you can right click and go right into... Sampler? Simpler to sampler. There's a simpler, I thought, to, to drum rack option. Or there's a simpler to... Maybe it is simpler to sampler. Maybe that's what that does. I don't know. That doesn't seem... That doesn't seem like that's what I wanted to do. I believe there was... Ooh, lost control too. Oh, anyway, there's... Read the manual. <laughs> I cannot remember right now. You can group to drum rack, but is it group slices to drum rack? I don't remember. It seems like it's just putting my message at the beginning of this thing. Um, but we did a little bit of adjustment in kind of the global controls across a bunch of samples, so it's good for that. It's good for evenly tuning all of your samples, um, which is kind of annoying to do if you use just this method, because each of these slices, right, it's in the same kind of set, but it does not have... Um, you know, each of those controls have to be kind of remapped into presets. Um, I'm not sure how to make presets for um, what's going on here. But anyway, there's a, this is a crazy thing. Break is chopped hash key. Sorry, welcome back, Garion. And Tommy, do you have like a... I'm gonna, can I just switch to your computer? Can we just do that on there? Yeah, show? absolutely. I just need to get plugged in. All right, guys. Uh, cover your ears. I'm just telling you right now. All right. Oh, maybe it's... Let's see how messy my desktop is. All right. It's pretty messy, y'all. Ah, there we go. You got the clean one. That's this is good. This good. Is good. Let's open up Melodyne. Take a look at tool, it. What is this tool, yo? What is this? This is tool? the Melodyne editor. So this is the standalone Melodyne. Now, usually I like to use Melodyne in... I I usually like to use Melodyne in the uh in the plugin sense that's the right word okay. but today we're going to use it and just play with it a little bit on the uh on the kind of like introductory oh, level uh, right your, make sure you set your audio device up. yeah i gotta do that all right hold on a sec okay hashki had no idea how easy it was but thank you um, okay. We'll make more beats. My soon. audio is set to HDMI, oh. but I do not have a specific setting that would work in here. Let's see. Double chat. Now I'm using a slightly old version of Melodyne. From what I've heard, it's not really worth it to, uh, to get the um newest version unless mm. you don't have it already. The new version does do some cool stuff. Uh, I can't quite figure out whether or not this is going to input correctly, so we're going to have to give it a try. But yeah. basically, the way Melodyne works, it's not your typical pitch correction algorithm. A lot of those go based on sort of the key or the scale. And in Melodyne's case, it's a lot more granular and note by note, and it's pretty interesting mm -hmm. to actually take a look at it. So this is one section. For those of you who are watching um, last... I want to say last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. Oh, I'm not getting any audio coming you in. You might have to change your audio device uh, inside of the software. Let's see. It doesn't seem to offer a way for me to do that. Let's find out. Uh, generally, command comma will give you preferences in most applications. Maybe that will work? In this one, it just says no. There we go. That's cool. Okay, audio. We're going to go ahead. Core audio built-in output the only thing it's giving me. Oh, you can't go to HDMI? Well, I set 
core audio to export to HDMI here. Hold on a minute, everybody. Uh, yeah, there's the... Uh, Alright, and if you don't have control over it, then oh, it should work. Uh, let me know if We you don't can... have it. Let me see if I can go... If I can go hear this... There should be a, so a setting in the software, though, for sure. Yeah, it's not. So... Did you plug in after starting Melodyne? Let's close Melodyne, for... start yeah. it back up, and see if it detects... The HDMI is an option now. That's the way to go. And if it doesn't, we'll just try running it kind of like uh, in a different mode. Just get a really long headphone jack and <laughs> plug it into... Well, we could do that too. So if I'm looking at this right now, I'm actually going to set it to... So Melodyne can do pitch and time correction. And as you can see, this is not what we want to do for something that's melodic. So. Uh, I can set melodic here, and if I'm dealing with a whole uh, audio file, I can or or several different parts, I can also set it to polyphonic, which is pretty yeah. useful. So it starts with pitch detection. Yeah. So, uh, all right, I've got HDMI now. Cool. Forty-eight kilohertz. I think it'll work. Okay. Way. It was just an issue of a. Uh, all right. So. Yeah. This is uh, kind of one of the chorus takes we did a couple weeks ago. Celestial. You can see it's super out of tune. Oh, interesting. Right? Um, like, this is the rawest of the raw, right? And so this is a chorus uh, on track we were working on. It doesn't sound super bad, but what you're seeing is basically... Um, and this is a little hard. Got to zoom in a little more. Let's take a look. Okay. Zoom in at this. So you can see like a glide between mm -hmm. like really that bass note and kind of, you know, it's a, you're mostly on though for what it's detecting. Yeah, so if I go ahead and click on this, mm -hmm. take a look at it. So That's cool. That's pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Now if I just want to blanket correct pitch and I say, you know what, put it here. Maybe I select that chorus. It's good to do it in sections so that you kind of uh, can track and measure that. So let's do this whole this whole uh, kind of chorus vocal. And this is uh, this is one of the layered takes, which is probably why it's out of tune too. Mm. This is like kind of basically a doubling take, which is always going to be a little bit a little bit out. So if I correct the pitch here, that's giving us a good start. Now that's sort of the automated version of it, right? Mm. So if I zoom in a little bit more, Can Melodyne's you... pretty fun on this front, but if you look here, yeah, okay. Huh? So... Oh, I see. So can you go like crazy ham with this and like sound like TI? Yeah, I mean, I, what you can do with that is you can basically go here and you can say, you know what? Flatten so... this flatten this completely right. and that's using actually this tool the pitch modulation tool okay so if i want to be really really flat oh wow i can do this so it's like a really sharp and jump. this is just double clicking on each one to give it that robot effect all right, right that's cool let's go back to playback Celestial. now that will tell me that I'm right. <laughs> now so you can also micro tune. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And the other thing is that there's there's a way to actually make this much more on pitch than normal. I've got to figure out what that is, but. Oh, I see. So it uses the piano roll. There yeah. you go. Yeah. So if you double click on something, it'll snap it out outside of the the um the conventional. I guess the conventional like uh, deviation that's allowed, right? That's so that's cool. Celestial. Now that's my that's my super uh, <laughs> robot effect. You want to effect something like that? This is a good way to do it. But oh, so can you then? Uh, do but you I'm undoing that now because uh, I want it to sound like more of a real vocal, right? Yeah. And again. Celestial. So there's a little flex there. I still don't quite like what's happening here, which is that I'm scooping up into that. Right. So I lower that just a little bit. 
Ah, interesting. So it's like a curve editor that's keeping track of pitch. Yeah, so it's kind of listening to the modulation as we go. Celestial. So that way it's not too over the top. Oh, and God. likewise, this pitch drift tool oh. lets you kind of be... There we go. That just lets me kind of tweak it in a different way that says, don't deviate that much, but you still want to have that scoop in and cool Celestial. stuff like that. Celestial. That yes. kind of thing. You shine and shimmer as I'm watching from below. Let's see how this one's kind of sharp. Yeah. Or flat. <laughs> you shine and shimmer as I'm watching from below. And that's, you know, okay, there's something a little weird about that one take, right? In that one place. So. And that's a strange vowel slash consonant mix. So that's where you can kind of really play with the granular Celestial, aspect of a vocal performance. You shine and shimmer as I'm watching from below. There's something interesting happening here. Mm. Shine and shimmer as I'm Listen to that. Shine and shimmer. Now these are two syllables, but mm. Melodyne hasn't figured that out yet. Now this is oh, where I we want to use the note separation tool to go, hey, hey Melodyne, right. that's actually two notes that are different pitches, right? right. Uh, now, right, right. suddenly, uh, suddenly that is recognizable as two notes, and then you can tune the individual elements of it instead of saying, this is a huge deviation in the pitch that would normally exist. Yeah. You just kind of go like, you shine and shimmer as I'm watching from the I still don't like that huge fluctuation there, right? Uh, uh especially with voices, you know, when we move our voices, we do uh, crazy things. It don't always sound very good. <laughs> uh, now here's the problem. That's actually hovering around T, not do in that in that scale. Right. Right? Yes. Same here. See you, dog. So you gotta actually go, hey, we don't wanna. Celestial, you shine and shimmer as I'm watching from below. So there we go. Uh, okay. And this is just, this is just the slightest amount of work that we've done on this. It's crazy how much you can tune a vocal take. Like... Yeah. And it's not like, uh, let's see, this is mellow. Just so I have a. A project file for it. I'm going to work on this a lot more later. But, you know, you can also do really cool things with Melodyne. I'm not sure if I can do this in the single track editor, but I'm going to see if I can get away with it. What about, like, um, transients and sibilants and, like, explosives and, like, these other kind of um, vocal trends that. What? Well, I can do a lot of weird things with this. So, I don't know what I just did there, but let's get rid of that. But all of the kind of non-tonal mm -hmm. sounds that our voices mm -hmm. make, right? Like, mm -hmm. is there a lot of tuning of that as well? Like, I understand timing that you can do. I've seen a pretty good adjustment in. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. What are you? Where are you going with this? I'm interested. It's a pretty wild tool. Well, there's an amplitude tool, mm -hmm. timing, time handle, attack speed. This is formant right here. Okay. So if I don't like formant on something. Oh, interesting. So if something is, you know, in the most practical... I mean, you can also do crazy cool edits with this, mm -hmm. but in the most practical sense, if something doesn't sound good on the recording that, you know, you've got a plosive in a bad place or something like that, you need to, like, dial it back ever so slightly. That's uh, that's useful in, like, polishing or, mm. you know, kind of giving something that, like, diamondy effect, right? And mm. also, if you have something that's been broken into two notes that shouldn't be there, like... Whoa. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Something that's... Like, this shouldn't be broken into two notes, right? Okay. It should be recognized as a pitch drift in a single note, really, for kind of a practical purpose. So you can use the same tool we did, the note splitter tool, you can double click it and unsplit that note if you so desire. Now, in mm. this particular case, I think it probably actually works if it stays broken up. And this little interesting glissando tool between these two features All right. 
this shows you essentially that those notes are connected on a pitch level, which as long as this little uh, chain is here, it's going to kind of recognize that movement and not really disrupt it, so it doesn't sound kind of carved up. That's most common uh, and available here in these side tools. So uh, the sort of main pitch tool will tell you. And if you have a real break in something where you shouldn't, where it should be more of a separation, you can also basically. Ugh, I'm gonna have to work a lot on this one to get it to the right pitches, but um, you know that's where you can do this. And you can also just say select all. A good place to start off for using Melodyne for pitch correction, select all with the pitch tool, mm -hmm. which is uh, this one here, and then just double click. It'll snap everything to somewhere on that grid. Now, right, right. later you're going to have to go back and be like, no, no, I was flat. That's, you know, that's the key of F, so I'm not hitting all those long notes on E, uh, right? Yeah. You know, I had a bad take or I had a bad day or uh, I'm super allergic to everything on Earth. <laughs> well, and you want to preserve... Mm -hmm. A lot of the performance as well. Like it's definitely a polishing tool, not necessarily exactly, like exactly. an overhaul. Like I mean, I really, I really think it's absolutely great though. Like yeah, the amount of crazy Rock. stuff. Although I can see like so there are three kind Rock. of lines going through here. There's like the there's I guess like the tendency or something like that. Like between like skipping between notes, right? And then there's also the relationship between each note. Right. That's. Mm -hmm. And I mean, here's a good example of here's a good example of something where, okay. That's that shouldn't be a different pitch, right? That shouldn't be a different note. That's the the Y in the word you. Sometimes it just works. Okay. Sometimes it just works, but but in this case, it's treating like a, a essentially a vowel scoop as a different pitch right but this is a tough line this one was actually really out of tune initially and you can see there's a lot of pitch wavering on it this was one of the doubling chorus takes so you know it didn't quite uh didn't quite do everything we needed it to but <laughs> if you, it's kind of frightening out of context but what we're doing <laughs> is we're slowly correcting the drift yeah so that okay that bad take has the right spirit to it and we can make it more usable, still get that right energy. Okay. You make me brighter than the sun. Now that's wrong. Yes. What happened there? Well, this has been split into two things, right? Mm. So it's a little bit of trial and error, too. I'm sorry, <laughs> Michelle dog. hates this. The uh, Michelle, oh, the sleeping dog. She just sleeps all day. She does. She's been sleeping a lot. Lately. Michelle, why are you sleeping? Now, I've I've taken away a lot of the organic sounding part of that. Remember, you make me brighter than the sun. Right. right? So pretty... it sounds a little less organic. If I want to undo that effect, I can instead of going down, ah! I can widen these a little bit again. Oh, interesting. So you go up to exaggerate the effect, and you go down to to uh, essentially de-emphasize it, right? How about like you... um, comparison, right? Do you have to use the tools to kind of rebalance between the two? You make between me the performance than the that's sun. adjusted and the original. Hmm? Do you have to keep readjusting the like? I don't know, what do you use to li to listen to the original? Is there a way to like A B? Like, well, what I usually will if do you with go it kind is of way out there, right? I mean, what I'll usually do with it is I will take a look at it in um. I'll do it in a DAW, so I'll do it in like Logic as a plugin. Oh, I see. Take a look at uh, these cool things that way. And the other thing that's kind of fun is uh, if you do use the multi-track version of Melodyne, which would be on the newer uh, edition, mm -hmm. basically we can try something here. I can say polyphonic treatment. Oh, okay. I don't know if this is going to work on the single track version. Right. I usually get around it by just uh, using them as different solo stems. But I'm going to try a couple things, which is to say, let's see if I can. 
in previous versions I have actually done this, but I think it may just be not be in the standalone. The galaxy with you. So this I don't want to view as a I want this to be a single line melodic trick, right? Okay. But let's go ahead and let's just open a new logic file. Just Ooh. right now. Today. I'm gonna close and Melodyne for a second. Get a new empty project. Sure. Open butts dot wave. Logic Pro. Now, I actually like to use Logic a lot. It's my DW of choice. Tell me about it. Your history. Your well, I've been using it for ten years, okay. more than ten years now. So I just happen to be very used to it. It's great for kind of MIDI sequencing. I also like the instruments it comes with. Alex uh, City, I'm asked, uh, where did you guys learn how to use DAWs and stuff? Uh, I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston, where uh, I studied film scoring. So um, for more conventional cue writing and video stuff, I'm familiar oh, with Logic. Although they didn't teach me Logic, they taught me Digital Performer. Oh, okay. But if you learn any DAW, you can kind of translate a lot of the... Uh, the basics out there, so you can definitely fight your way around. Yeah, I learned um, I learned Garage Band in high school, <laughs> and somebody afterward showed me Ableton, and I got addicted to it. So that was yeah, that was a while ago. I'm gonna say 2007. It'll be 10 years any minute now. Yeah, but it's all a matter of you know making music, just make music. You know, find the better tools that help you do the thing. Like, I think the tool itself shouldn't be the problem. It's like the, what's it called? What's the word I'm looking for? Like, you, there's just, you're just driven to do the thing. You're, yeah, it's not the you tool. Have, it's, you have the impulse. It's not the so. tool. It's how you use it, right? Well, yeah. just like the, in, the in a sense, I feel like it's kind of like the means, right? Like the, the, the ends. Or it's like the goal is to make music. The goal is not to be a good Pro Tools user, <laughs> you know. Yeah, totally. Like, I don't want to be an MLR ninja. <laughs> I want to make cool beats, or whatever. So as long as you have that, what is that? I just swear, it's just, it's just, just drive like, make you know, do it with whatever. <laughs> Use your phone. Lots so of Pro looks cool. let's look at our very raw. Are very Dude. raw takes, right? Celestial. Now, cool. that's that's I, right. you know, that's not the worst take I've ever done, right? And there's our harmonies here, there's our choruses here. Mm -hmm. Let me solo this for a second. I want to show one more trick with Melodyne. Celestial. You now that's a much better take than the one we were working with earlier. So, mm -hmm. just FYI, that's a that's a a generally better uh, and more fun thing to work with, but. I'm going to make a duplicate of this. Okay. Well, first, actually, before I make a duplicate of it, I'm going to attach Melodyne to it. So, under Audio Effects here, Audio Units, Felimony, Melodyne, open up for me, Melodyne. Melodyne. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. It can cause instability because uh, it's for the coded, but that's okay. It so, here it is. Here it is as a plug in, right? Mm hmm. And this is kind of interesting because you still have to, you basically have to use transfer mode over here, what get it that? into the plug-in mode of Melodyne. So you play it back Celestial, once. Oh, so it like analyzes it one yeah. time? Yeah, it'll okay. grab it, analyze it, put it in place here, right? That's cool. You take me deeper into absolute zero. So if you open the file mm. raw in Melodyne the way I did before, obviously your export's going to be a project file and a, like a wave file or something like that. And that's the single track editor, right? Do you have to re reanalyze like you make me tracks once you played it through? Well, like if I make adjustments or if I edit that 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 audio track. Let's um, see. I don't know. It's supposed it, to be in done? transfer mode. Oh, you know what? I messed it up. I didn't. I'm sorry. No, I I didn't hit that before playback, right? I don't know. So, if I press transfer here. 
I go, you know what? Celestial. Uh -huh. oh, okay, now it's recording. Looks like it's recording, but it looks like it's more confused. I'm very, I'm confused. Let me, yeah, I know, me too. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here, hit transfer. Yeah. Suddenly it starts recording. Right? There you go. You shine and shimmer as I'm watching from below. Cause you're celestial. Now I happen to think I uh, was a little late on the draw zero. there, oh, but you can oh, see it celestial. essentially recording now. Nice. Show me the galaxy with you. The world is fun. You're my celestial. Whoa. You make me brighter than the sun. That's the main take. The other ones are doubling takes. Obviously, that's a better one, but. So for now we look at it here. Okay. Got my take. I may have missed a moment on the transfer here. So let's double click to play back. Celestial. Oh, there it is. Okay. You shine and shimmer as a okay, great. So we got that one chorus. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were doing uh, the whole track, which I will be, I would go ahead and do the other sections too. You can see there's three different chorus right. in this take. Uh, for now, I've actually just done a quick quantize. Uh, of that. I'm going to make a copy of it. Sure. Okay. Probably going to make it crash, but that's fine. This is why we're here. Oh, now, I see. on so... this copy mm -hmm. I've made, there's another instance of Melodyne. Right. I've got the same audio file. I just kind of dragged it over to make a copy. Okay. On the second copy, I can really screw with this, with this first chorus. Mm-hmm. And I could do something like this, right? I could go, okay, so I could go. Let's harmonize that. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Now you it. heard the harmony take where I already did this, but this is. I'm creating an artificial harmony take that's an exact robotic copy of the whole thing. That's this is how fun. a lot of those uh, like awesome producers do that kind of robotic chorus effect. Celestial, you right? Yeah, now, so... if I want to really make it more robotic right, on right. that harmony, you can be your own. Flatten it, and then flatten the original All over right, here. Right. Let's open that, that one back up. You could be your own uh. Vocaloid. I mean, basically, yeah, you can make yourself sound like your own Vocaloid, right? <laughs> Lock that in place. Grab these. Flatten them out. And if I play them together in here... They are. Now, it does do you the service of not playing everything go that's happening at once, which is pretty nice. So if we go here, yeah. play them both back. Let's see what happens. Celestial. I like it. So, yeah, that's just... That's not how I want the end result to sound, but if I wanted to do that and keep layering it yeah. and make it crazy and robotic and have this kind of almost vocoder style effect, you do that Whoa. in here. So Melodyne is really fun. It's, it's kind of like... It's so good. It's like silly putty for pitch correction, basically. Uh, it's not... <laughs> it's great. I like that really low gurgling, like... It sounds like a Mitomo or a Tomodachi Life voice. <laughs> Dinner Sonic wants to know where we can get Tommy the Vocaloid. Uh, Tommy the Vocaloid. I actually, I actually talked at length about somebody or with somebody about doing this, but yeah. um, we haven't heard anything lately. But I really want to do that someday. Do like a do well, like kind a, of a Vocaloid thing. So there's that new Adobe Audio Toolkit, right? Called mm -hmm. Voco. Mm -hmm. And they can, Celestial. you know, basically analyze audio to resynthesize. Um, a lot of the technology that makes this kind of stuff possible. Yeah. Um, like for example, that formant adjustment, right? Yeah. It's basically kind of repositioning the tongue. Um, it's kind of how that sounds and how that works. And so, Adobe built. And you probably saw this video, a super crazy vocoder, um, that is like, make your own Siri in twenty minutes. So um, of yourself or something, or of, I don't know, Anna Kasparian. Um, but that's the, whoa. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's fine. Anyway, so you can, uh, get enough, <laughs> you can get enough of, uh, enough, enough samples of somebody's voice that'll analyze their, your voice, 
and create its own like uh synthesized yeah synthesized that's model really of that cool person. i love that um so that's probably coming to creative cloud in the next couple of months mm-hmm. if you are nice. super daring celestial you could... i like it and yeah it does sound like autotune but autotune is doing the same thing yeah uh, autotune is really i mean there's the thing called autotune and then there is the broad range of effects that do that and that's that's basically what we're we're dealing with here so that's um uh yeah it's a, yeah. It's, is it an fft um like math is it fast fourier transform <laughs> is how we do that yeah um fourier you would know i kind of have a sense about it but yeah, you can do a lot of crazy stuff with audio by understanding like how to detect the pitch within a cycle of sound and this kind of thing. If I pick a particular period, I can get the pitch. I'm kind of futz that multiply and get repitching. Yeah. So show me more of logic. I've never used this tool. You've never used logic? Okay, well these yeah. are the audio functions in logic. I don't have a MIDI keyboard up right now, but Basically, Logic comes with its own suite of software instruments that, um, you know, just kind of you can start off with an electric piano. I don't okay. have. I, mean, I have, have a, a keyboard over here, but I don't have one set up. Yeah. But base, I like uh, Logic's kind of out of the box instruments. They're really useful to grab. Of course, you go over here and you can search the Logic library, or, uh, of course, what most of us have to do is go down into the actual audio source here. And just select, say, uh, contact or absent or something like that to get oh, our library up. I don't have my library on this computer at the moment. Uh, well, I don't have most of my library at the moment, but I have Super Audio Card on here. That's fun. So we could start off with something there and load it up. Um, um, Alex EDM asks, uh, he has a sam- a k- I have a sample in a certain key. How am I supposed to know which notes are in that key and pair them with the melody and try and match that, you know, by changing time? Like basically remixing. How do you mm. make? How do you match keys? How do you? Well, um, so Ableton. It depends on what the sample is, right? If it's a vocal sample and you need to pitch shift it, Melodyne's actually really good for anything that has uh, an isolated voice like that. Mm. Ableton's really good for something that has a final mix or something like that. Yeah, that's some weird stuff, definitely. But also, you know, you've got major keys and minor keys. Mm. You've got to know kind of what you're working with. And the best the best way to know if, if two things will mash up is to actually just put them over each other, shift them around a little bit. But Ableton is fun for that, actually, because uh, you can do pitch shifting but keep the time in place, which is really important. That's something that Ableton and Melodyne share and make them both really powerful tools, whereas... Uh, something like this. I don't know if you can see these audio files I have behind the big uh, instrument window here. Mm-hmm. But like, if I were to pitch shift one of these in Logic, it would actually be a very difficult endeavor. Uh, Logic does have a tool that's pretty cool called Flex Pitch that they introduced a few times ago, <laughs> a few versions ago, okay. let's say. And the way that works is kind of neat. If I, I have to figure, remember how to enable it, but. Flex pitch actually functions in a similar way, right? Mm. To these. Let me unsolo these. Mm-hmm. And basically, if you go down here, you turn on the flex button, turn on flex, you can do flex pitch or flex time. Oh, cool. And this is closest to the approximation of oh, like these other features. So this lets you kind of Melodyne oh, that's cool. in Logic, which is a nice feature. It's just not quite as advanced as Melodyne, but if you can only afford one thing, you get the synthesizers, you get the powerful tools. Logic also has a ton of plugins. It's got kind of a default, a default uh, kind of stereo bus reverb that sounds really, really nice that I actually use on a lot of final mixes. Nice. Just out of box. You can also go into the effects and use any number of things that just coming with the program are really powerful. Cool. Uh, you know, really powerful tools. 
How much is Pro? How much is Logic Pro? The whole thing is three hundred dollars. Oh, that's way good. Which is that's way so... marked down from fifteen hundred dollars, <laughs> which is what it cost ten years ago. Okay. So. Yeah, that's definitely like Logic Pro. I didn't know that. It's actually it a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Apple makes it, so I, let me see if it's three ninety nine or. It's Whoa. really useful and it has a lot of sense out of box. I enjoy it a lot. So. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, as long as well, it runs all of them as AU plugins. Yeah. So as long it doesn't run VST, which is the one thing about it that's a bummer, but it runs AU. So. <laughs> I yeah I I'm I'm all AU these days just for. Just because I'm a snob, I don't know. Is that is that a good answer? <laughs> the other thing is that uh, it does give you it gives you a ton of upgrades for free, which is really nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's I mean, it just about... like like other Apple stuff, where it is now in this life cycle of continually doing free updates and right. keeping itself relevant and tying in with Apple's other music production stuff. So nice. Yeah, uh, definitely. I have kind of a, a love-hate relationship with Ableton's upgrade pattern because mm -hmm. they kind of jump ship and they're like, yeah, um, they're like, oh well, we're doing hardware now, so most of their updates are to support their hardware. So yeah, um, just to get back to that yeah. real quick, uh, I'd love to show Super Audio Card off sometime, but on a day when we can plug in and go, uh, go with the keyboard, uh, we can do that a little bit more and play with it. Uh, since I don't really have any MIDI controller plugged in right now, we're almost done with the show. Yeah, we but, don't have too much time left. But uh, just to go back, circle back to Alex EDM. Yes. When you make a pitch lower in FL Studio, it will make the sample longer. Now that's a really common problem with pitch shifting mm -hmm. in audio engines, and that's uh, that's because basically shifting pitch is actually really difficult. Shifting time is actually really difficult, and so uh, what these programs have done that uh, have been really effective, Ableton, uh, Logic, and Melodyne, they've all figured out how to maintain that on kind of what's a non-destructive level. Mm -hmm. Previously, um, you know, and more commonly when you have something like FL Studio, they need to make those changes doing what's called destructive editing, which is to actually alter the audio file itself. Yeah. And so these programs actually use some very clever algorithms to do it on the fly, which is super cool. And granted, it's been like 10 years since these things came out, so they aren't as impressive now as they were in like 2002. But yeah. in 2002, they blew my freaking mind. So uh, this is actually a big, uh, big successful <laughs> thing. So it's definitely, it's definitely grown up. This tool. Is I think it's like the it's supposed yeah. to be like the big daddy version of like it's like GarageBand kind of a oh, like they, they yeah. got Camel in this right I believe Alchemy is part of Logic now or part of GarageBand yeah it is uh, like, it's part of I can pull it up I believe do you I have, have it Alchemy right now. I that's, believe I do hold on that's a super great synthesizer I believe I do Let's I kind of wish I had yeah and I mean the thing is that I just go right here to Alchemy and there it is boom. Great tool. So it cut all of these yeah. are the these are all the synths that Logic comes with. Right, right. So you know if you don't have an orchestral library, you can still start with this. And when I'm on vacation or something and I want to jam out a track, and I have my little like ancient, you know, one octave keyboard to just lay down some MIDI. <laughs> yeah. I can do it here, and Alchemy is a really sophisticated, cool synth, that kind of thing. Yeah, Apple took this company off the market. To buy this tool mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's way good um but in any case um super audio card can you play us a noise or do you want to just go over this next time uh we'll do we'll go over some of the plugins and stuff next yeah. time we'll play with logic a little more because we've spent a lot of time in ableton true um and something that i uh i would like to eventually share is that if you have a central daw like this all these programs they use a protocol called rewire and they can mm -hmm. all work together at the same time so for example uh like you saw me run melodyne on its own and then you saw me run melodyne as a as a, a plug-in here mm -hmm. you can do this with ableton live you can run it in remire mode where i have a lot of tracks especially when i'm on a deadline and i have to deliver like you know 10 game company like background tracks in one yeah, yeah. week or something it's like oh i want to make my beats in ableton because 
freaking great for that. Interesting. And in Ableton, I can just grab a loop or grab a beat I'm working with and do all these cool effects to it, and it takes me way less time. But uh, if I want to just jam out MIDI, uh, you know, in kind of a way that I'm comfortable with and already know, I do all those tracks in Logic, no, and I mean, then yeah, just have the, the drums in Ableton or something like that. Yes. Um, hmm. Yeah, I definitely want to figure we re rewire back out. I've had issues with it um, since switching over to an Apple machine, mm -hmm. um, which is no fault on theirs. It's really Propellerhead's fault, but <laughs> everything is Propellerhead's fault. Yeah. Yeah. And and yeah, we'll we'll play with this a little bit next time. But I do like Super Audio Card a lot. It's oh, a man. lot of fun. You also have a um, drum lab so too. Man. <laughs> What I like it about all. it a lot, uh, and I'd love to go through it and actually, I'd love to just like play with sample libraries for like a whole show yeah. uh, or to just be like, let's play with, let's play with sounds. Sure. But what I really dig about Super Audio Cart is that it, um, it's being, uh, oh. contact's being really <laughs> fussy because we're on the air. But right, right. if, uh, That's the live demo. what All is right. that? Oh, it's Way reloading the samples and contact. But if you look here, yeah. You've got your authentic folder, and then you've got all of these things that are actually layered between the different samples to create unique synthesizers. That's cool. So well, it's uh, like a sample synthesis, right? Like, yeah. Uh, so I I actually when I'm doing chip uh, sound alike stuff, I uh, often use the uh, YMCK Magical oh, Eight Bit yeah. plugin, which is free and it super cool and and just the simplest thing in the world, and it's an essential part of any musician's uh, deck because it's so easy to use. Uh, just gives it this classic NES sound. I should reinstall and, it. <laughs> yeah, Yokimura built it. Yeah. And it runs in 64-bit mode, which is great. <laughs> um, but for this one, what I like about this is that it brings in all of these different uh, classic gaming samples and classic gaming sound-alike samples, mm -hmm. but it lets you layer them. So, uh... Contact thinks I connected the audio device. That's weird. That's really weird. Well, what it lets you do is it essentially lets you layer all of these things as you go, and it'll create a new instrument based on five or six things. So inside of Contact, you can... Are you having fun? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, but in Contact, you can layer instruments, I guess, like have a rack of contact instruments or something like you that? You can do that. That's not even what I'm trying to do. It's just that... Uh, oh, what is this? This is like the sample editor in Contact, not the graphical layer, oh, but I see, I see. Contact's acting crazy right now because something happened with the playback engine. Mm. I think the HDMI flickered for a second, but... Yeah, that causes all kinds of problems. But in any case, um, you know... Consider uh, an instrument that's made of, say, a Sega Genesis bass and, like, an NES chip layer right, with an right. echo effect on it, right? That's going to give you um, an idea of how how this is actually, you know, no. uses this. Uh, Super Audio Cart's really cool because it uses these old um, sounds to create really new kind of composite, uh, composite synthesizers. Okay, okay. But I, I will definitely... I look forward to hearing it when we can when we can do that. But I'm gonna share a link right now to the Magical 8-bit plug, which is maybe my favorite piece of just simple out of the box software, and it's from YMCK, which is uh, Japan's kind of greatest chip tune band, <laughs> essentially. So uh, check that out for now. It's it's a free plugin. It's incredibly powerful, incredibly versatile, and you can use it in pretty much any. You know, pretty much any uh, sequencer you're working with, you can use it as a plugin in Ableton or Logic or uh, I don't think Garage GarageBand doesn't support AU, does it? Um, GarageBand. Mines? I don't think you can use it in GarageBand. I don't know. But That's you can use it in anything though. where you could have a VST or AU audio unit. Yeah, but any VST. Most things can use a VST host. We'll play um, a little bit more in Logic uh, in future shows, and we'll play with samples and sound sources and kind of look for fun things that we can all use but for I now i think it's time for us to sign off for a little yeah. help I believe especially because so. my computer is it's mega dying. frozen so i'm not gonna save this right now all right 
We'll catch you guys later. Yeah, and please get ready for, I believe, ADD drumming. That's right. It's, it's time for up. ADD dumbing. Drumming. I have it's it's contagious. Whatever it it's, is, it's it's contagious. I think I have like a you know a rash or something mm -hmm. too. Like there's just something something has hit the building. Yeah. And it's hidden with vengeance. Yeah. I downloaded well, CMYK. Uh, YMCK. YMCK. By the way, if huh? you have never checked out their music, uh, check that out too. YMCK has some great great tracks. Oh. And yeah. This is a cool. Have you seen this thing? I haven't. That's cool. This thing. Nice. It's 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 gonna be it's gonna be good. Thank you, Hashkey, for following us. Thank you, all you other folks for hanging out. Um, NES Dude Rockstar Academy is temporarily postponed. Um, as we Sam is actually out of uh out of town right now. He's got a composing job, uh, in Florida. He's nice. he's helping a composer arrange MIDI. For, or he's like doing, I don't know what it is, engineering or media arrangement. I, I've never worked <laughs> as a professional composer, um, especially in that regard, like with an orchestra. So I don't know what the, you know, what those different roles are. I know that there's somebody who looks at the charts and types in MIDI, um, as well as somebody who actually, you know, fixes that and like writes out and prints out the actual sheet music for everybody. So he's got, he's got a gig. That's the thing. He's got so a gig. Uh, Rockstar Academy is on hiatus right now for the week, and then next week is Thanksgiving, where That's right. most people going out of town. I'm going out of town too, so in a couple weeks we'll we'll be back and we'll explore more cool synths. I think I may just do like synth synth December, and I think so. We'll I just we visit slow down. some really cool sample libraries and really cool sounds, and do like a show and tell on uh, cool stuff we used through the month of December. After all, it is it is time for you to be asking for some. Thing. Yeah. It's time for you guys to be asking <laughs> for some Christmas gifts, right? Ooh. So, a uh, couple of these synth libraries might be a really nice thing to put on your wish list. You should do giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, get us some get us some funding so we can give you give That's you stuff. <laughs> Go to Patreon.com/slash/MintPotion and we can do giveaways. Right now, we're giving away uh, <laughs> postcards. Yeah, and a lot of time, but I'm actually I'm like enjoying that a lot. It's yeah, good to hang out with you guys in the off hours. Um, but yes, don't say goodbye just yet, unless you're actually leaving. I'm gonna um, say goodbye. Tommy's gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna say goodbye. I'll be. And I'm gonna say hello to. I'll Brian. be around on I'll our other stream. I'll be around on our other streams this week, <laughs> tomorrow and Thursday. But after that, I'm going to. This is really fun. I'm having okay. a great time. After that, I'm uh, going out of town for Thanksgiving. So That's we'll right. see you after the holiday, and then we'll start uh, just kind of going through cool scents for the month Excellent. of December. All right. Let's see what's going on in the studio. It's time for ADD drumming. Sit tight. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. <coughs> half. <laughs> How do half. you do the half? I can't do the half. I think you have to like take your arm out of the zone or something oh. when you like like before it's done transitioning. All right, I'm wasting <laughs> valuable airtime. I don't know what's going on. Just keep I'm dancing an like airplane. that. Wow, these guys totally seem prepared. Give me just a second. <laughs>